Hello. I'd like to talk to you about value for value as a new approach to crowdsourcing and the use of Bitcoin in podcasting 2.0, which can offer opportunities to musicians in addition to podcasters. There are a number of moving parts. Some are under, most of it's under development, the technology for podcasting 2.0. Uh, we're going to talk about traditional crowdsourcing, the history of podcasting, the new features of podcasting 2.0, and value for value. There are many applications of crowdsourcing from church ties, free will offerings, tips in the service industry, subscriptions, credit cards, uh, pledge drives. If it's not in cash and it goes through the traditional financial channels, there's, they're gonna take out a bite and what's left will go to the artists. One of the most intriguing presentations I've heard at MIA was a few years ago with a presenter talking about the tipping economy in China and how that's become the norm since 2013 with companies like Tencent making lots of money. Uh, they Tencent opened Apple to tipping, they're so powerful, and millions of dollars have gone from their fans to the artists they follow on social media. Twitch lets you tip your favorite gamers, some of whom receive thousands of dollars as they play from their fans who watch them play. Facebook Live, uh, YouTube, TikTok are now supporting GIFs in some way. Uh, the porn industry has been a driver in the development of many technologies like VCRs, affiliate programs, uh, user-friendly payment systems, video compression, streaming services, and the speed and bandwidth of the internet itself. They're faced with many of the same problems as musicians in terms of all the free content that's out there. So they're looking for new income streams like podcasting and live interaction. Here's a part of a live webcam uh, environment. The, if someone was performing up there in the upper left-hand corner, you'd be seeing them. And right underneath, there's a button that says, uh, give gold. So you could contribute money to your favorite performer there and uh, research has shown that impulse buying increases when the access to the product or services happens without time delay and having that a button in proximity to the source of enjoyment really increases the participation amazon knows this very well they found that many people were leaving things in their shopping carts so they developed the one click buy button which uh, is part of their growth Apple and Facebook take about 30% of what goes through their apps. Tencent in China takes a whopping 70%. PayPal and Patreon from 3 to 10%. So it's a significant amount of revenue that's being um, taken away from artists. So anything we can do to create new opportunities to bypass that are worth looking at, I think. Amanda Palmer spent five years dressed up as a bride offering miming offering a flower to passers-by and she put this her growing confidence in asking for support when she reached the the google doll, the goo, um the uh goo goo dolls uh she they they would do uh couch surfing and lots of support from their fans through social media and amanda became the first person to to get over a million dollars in a Kickstarter campaign for their next album. Here's a little bit from her TED Talk where she talks about a possible future of the music business. So a lot of people are confused by the idea of no hard sticker price. They see it as an unpredictable risk. But the things I've done, the Kickstarter, the street, the doorbell, I don't see these things as risk. I see them as trust. Now, the online tools to make the exchange as easy and as instinctive as the street they're getting there, but the perfect tools aren't going to help us if we can't face each other and give and receive fearlessly, but more important, to ask without shame. And I think when we really see each other, we want to help each other. I think people have been obsessed with the wrong question, which is how do we make people pay for music. What if we started asking, how do we let people pay for music? Thank you. In 2000, Adam Curry came up with the idea of podcasting 
Uh, and by 2004, he had convinced Dave Weiner to put it into his RSS specification. An RSS file is a text file that specifies the location uh, of where all the assets are for a piece of digital media. It will contain things like the name of it, uh, who the creators are, uh, artwork, the content, it's, uh, and where the, con the addresses of where all these things, all the content is loaded and located on a server on the internet. Adam took, made an index of all these feeds so that if you wanted to find them, you could go through his index to reach the feed, which would then in turn tell your podcast player where, uh, where the information was that needed to be loaded in for you to enjoy. Uh, Steve Jobs asked if he could have that index to put into iTunes in order to add uh, podcast capabilities to iTunes, and they did a pretty good job of maintaining the index uh, and keeping it open so that anybody who wanted to make a podcast player could access this the index there and reach the different RSS feeds. Writing an RSS feed by hand is not for the faint of heart. Uh, most podcasting hosting companies will uh, offer some kind of utility to their customers so that they can create an RSS feed in a way that's a little more comfortable for uh, civilians. And um, here, in, here's a screen of what I'm doing at the moment in JustCast.com, the provider I use for my podcast. I've just uploaded the thumbnail of the album art, and it's been assigned an address on the JustCast.com server. And so when you look at that in the RSS feed, uh, it's that imposing looking text file, looks like a, a gibberish from an HTML page. But down there uh, the highlighted is the address for that little thumbnail. So when it gets time to display the artwork for my track, the podcast player will go to this, this uh, find this file that's, whose address is specified. Not much had happened in podcasting for a decade and uh, uh, Apple had deplatformed Alex Jones in 2018 by uh, taking him out of the, their podcast index. So Adam Curry and Dave Jones and their partners thought it was important to create an environment that was resistant to censorship and that wouldn't be dependent on any one company like Apple, Google, Spotify, who might change the terms of service at any point and take your business model out from underneath you. It's risky to build your business on top of another business. So they created a decentralized index for podcasts and they have over 4 million RSS feeds now in it and uh, added new capabilities, new features to podcasting uh, through the namespace, which is uh, a collection of new tags that can be put into the RSS feed to create chapters, define who the persons involved are, and uh, create a value block to specify how money would be sent around and divided up once it arrived. They also decided to use uh, the Lightning Network. They could change that if Lightning doesn't uh, stay around forever. But um, Bitcoin is the programmable money for the internet. It's native to the internet, but it's expensive to write uh, transactions and to update blocks in the ledger that store who has purchased or sold uh, what, how many Bitcoin. So the Lightning Network is a network that writes on top of Bitcoin and hand, can be used for uh, micropayments, which is very interesting for musicians who have a hard time collecting lots of money from people who might have an easier time collecting small amounts. A, a small micropayment going through Bitcoin would be absorbed by the fees uh, to to uh, register that transaction and it's slow. So Lightning is a lot faster and uh, much cheaper for, my, for uh, small transactions like that. Podcasts now can have chapters and each chapter can have its own artwork. So you can jump from place to place based on the, you know, the title of that chapter. And as you're listening, that picture will pop up uh, if you're driving in your car, a picture will pop up on your console for the chapter. It just makes the experience a lot more fun. There's also a medium tag in, in podcasting 2.0 specification, and this makes podcasting much more extensible. You could have podcasts in there, but you could also have music or video or films or audiobooks or newsletters or blogs. Anything 
that can be described, uh, its locations broken down and described in an RSS feed. Another important uh, tag there at the bottom is the value recipient tag. And that's where you specify who gets paid and how much. Uh, you can split up the payments that come in among the different musicians, the engineer, the producer, the artist, the webmaster. You can define right in the value block how money will be divided. So it's kind of like a mini contract. And the RSS feed uh, in this value block could also be a way to solve the the uh, problem we the Gordian knot we have with licensing samples uh, the use of samples if you could in the value block if say I sample a public enemy song if it was acceptable to public enemy to get 20% of the income for that song I could write in the value block say send 20 a 20% 20 split to, to them it's an opportunity for the future in the meantime this system is, works the best if you have uh, original content, since the licensing of other people's content, we don't want to have to go through sound exchange. Abel Kirby and Sir Spencer decided to record an album as a proof of concept to demonstrate how a music album could be released under Podcasting 2.0. They recorded the album from different cities. They pushed and pulled their tracks on GitHub. And in their podcast, Ablecraft, they discuss how they accomplished that and the choices they made on making the music. At the bottom there, it says value for value. The little red sliders show that they're splitting at 50-50 between him and Sir Spencer. To find a, a modern app to listen to podcasts, you can find those at newpodcastapps.com. And these will have uh, some or all of the new podcasting 2.0 features. So you might want to try out a new podcast app and see what you've been missing. John C. Dvorak and Adam Curry have been doing their podcast, No Agenda, for over a decade, and they've decided not to rely on advertising because that's another opportunity for censorship. They use the value for value model, which has a very specific approach that Adam has uh, developed. And basically it goes, we're giving you our, our work for free, and we ask that you consider what value you've received from that. And one example he gives for comparison is what would you pay for the price of a movie and a tub of popcorn? We've just given you, you know, two hours of entertainment on the podcast. What is that worth? To, what was that worth to you? You put a number to that and you send that to us as either time, talent or treasure. In other words, uh, some sort of uh, financial reward if it's treasure. They've also gotten quite a bit of time and talent from their listeners who they call producers who help produce the show. It's a media media rich experience with all the clips and jingles and uh, audio mixes and all that their uh, producers send in. I've decided to uh, adopt the value for value model as much as I can. Uh, and so I've been trying to gain confidence in asking for support. I've got four podcasts uh, of my old of old albums that you can see there in CurioCaster. CurioCaster is a uh, one of the podcasting 2.0 uh, apps that uh, you can f see the new features in. Uh, and it, it's the one that so far that runs, it's the only one that runs in a web browser. So you can go to curiocaster.com and try it out without installing any new software. I invested a couple hundred dollars to buy a Raspberry Pi, hard drive, RAM card, and fan. Uh, after a few days, I installed the Raspi Blitz software, which is a free program to turn your Raspberry Pi into a lightning node. I'm now synchronized with the Bitcoin ledger, and it's my understanding that I have the over 500 million Bitcoin transactions, the history of all, of going back to the beginning, stored on my little $50 computer the size of a play, deck of playing cards. And every 10 minutes, it's going to get updated with the new information that the miners are writing. It's not a mining machine, it's a, a cash register sitting on the internet where I can receive micropayments. They are in the form of Satoshis. Since a Bitcoin is worth, at this point, around $42,000, uh, nobody's going to send me a whole Bitcoin. Uh, a Satoshi, or lovingly called a Sat, is worth one hundred millionth of a Satoshi. So a thousand Satoshis is worth something like $2. The, the record of the sats being sent over to me is or will be stored on my Raspberry Pi. 
it's not a professional setup. I might do something wrong at any point. It might have some memory problem. So I'm using it only for uh, small amounts and to, but mostly to learn how this new uh, world of internet money can work because um, there's a lot of moving parts. It's under development. There's 40 different names. Uh, it was a lot, it's a, a lot to keep in your head and, and to understand how it fits all together. And if you operate your own node, just as even as a hobbyist might, when they build a, a, their first computer from Radio Shack kit, it's kind of at that level. Uh, it's given me a, a place to bring everything together and understand how the parts work, and I have a much better understanding of it now. Looking at this display of my Raspberry Blitz, at the bottom there is the public key showing uh, that long string. I copy that, and then I put that into my value block um, back at my host, back at, at uh, just cast. That public key that I just copied from my uh, that I put into the the uh, RSS feed generator. Here it is now popping up. That's that thing highlighted in blue. The bit in orange is saying that this is a node where that this this address is for a node. And if you we zoom in on that a little bit, just that one line there, it shows at the end that I'm getting the full hundred percent percent split. It was a solo album. If I had uh, other people that I wanted to share with at this point, I could define other value recipients underneath mine and divide up the split amongst us so that we'd each receive uh, less than 100%. They would have to have their own node. This is a program called Helipad that's running on my Raspi Blitz that's uh, telling me who has been sending me uh, donations. The first donation that came in was a, a t one, two, three, four sats from Sir Spencer as a test to see if the system's working. I tested it myself, sent myself some sats. And in this video, you're going to see it switches back and forth between two roles. At first, you see me listening to the song in CurioCaster, and then I'm switching back over to Helipad to see if those, how long it takes for those uh, boosts to come in. Helipad has this cute feature. It goes pew pew, pew when, it, uh, when something arrives. That's always an exciting moment. As I'm listening in CurioCaster, there's an area here in the bottom that says I'm streaming 100 sats a minute. That's a, a, a rate that I've set, that I've chosen. I've decided to support the podcast producer or at a rate of 100 sats per minute. So while I'm listening, every minute it sends 100 sats or 4 cents to the owner's node. And that's a wonderful opportunity. I think it's you know better than, than Spotify would pay. And um, it's happening. I don't have to think about it. It's almost like subscribing to the whole concept of value for value. Once listeners get on board and say, I'm willing to spend 4 cents a minute, then any podcast that comes up is going to benefit from that decision. So the whole community wins when, when uh, another person's converted to the concept of supporting what they want to see more of or what they appreciate. In the middle, this blue button says boost 1,000. And I've chosen uh, that, that uh, value of 1,000. I could boost 200 or 500. But every time I hit that boost button now, it's going to send 1,000 sats, which is like 40, 50, 48 or 50 cents. And I get rewarded by a little eruption of confetti on the screen, which is so fun. And uh, if I really get excited, I can hold down the boost button and a window opens up that allows me to add a, me a comment, a message to the uh, person, the, the host, and uh, put in an even bigger amount if I want. And the, that boost will arrive. We call them boostograms. And that will arrive along with the comments and provide a great way for uh, the creator to know what people enjoyed most and e exactly at what point in the program or song they got the most excited. So here's that video. Um, I'm switching back and forth between two roles, seeing the song playing in uh, CurioCaster, and then I'm switching over to Helipad, which has a white background, to waiting f to see how long it takes for my sats to, to go from the from CurioCaster through the uh, 
Lightning Network to my Raspberry Blitz. And I got a little impatient. I started switching back and forth. These are early days. But you'll hear the pew pew come in twice as a as a result of hitting the boost button and then sending a boostogram and little labels pop up to to try to explain that so it happens quickly but see if you can see the the amount of time between when a boost or boostogram is sent and the amount of time it takes for it to arrive back on my node So this still seems ma like magic to me. The fact that I can send pennies to a contract uh, content creator in less than a minute. I've started a website, Music Casting. Uh, I like Sir Spencer's idea of moving forward and helping other people get there. So I'm sharing the resources that I've used, I've found to uh, to learn up to where I have, and uh, a, time, a narrative of what I did to accomplish the various tasks, along with a glossary, because as I say, there's 50 different terms, and it's like a, a new vocabulary, and uh, I, I want to help people who want to put their music out through as podcasts and try out this value for value system using the Lightning Network. I've created a new podcast and plan to release a background track a day on it for all the uh, songs in a popular book published by Hal Leonard that's used um, in the ukulele sing-along community. And the, the background tracks will follow the same arrangement, uh, be in the same key and everything as the, as the uh, charts in the book. Two years ago at a summit, me at Summit, I reported on the Song Sync app that I was working on with some computer science students. It's to help sing-along groups uh, synchronize lyrics. We had thought of having subscriptions or a per-use fee, but instead I'm going to try the value for value method and have ask people to donate what they think this app is worth, or the songs, the, the experience of the songs is worth to them. I'll then keep track of how many times the lyrics for each song have been displayed and compute how much was collected per song and see if that's a reasonable uh, uh, amount to, to propose to Hal Leonard to uh, set up a, a licensing arrangement with, uh, with publishers and their lyricists. Uh, there are a lot of moving pieces, but I hope at, at this point you've seen how value for value and podcasting kind of fit together as a new opportunity. Bitcoin is notorious in part due to its volatility. I wish I'd gotten in back in 2018 and had a 60 time growth in my investment. It still could be a good uh, investment opportunity and store of value, but I think the real opportunity now in 2022 is to learn how to use the Lightning Network and what the capabilities are of programmable money and to get involved now with businesses that uh, are built on top of 
Lightning and Net uh, Lightning and Bitcoin uh, as a, um, a platform to build new businesses. I hope you'll try it out. Thank you. Bye bye.